Are you a fit pro struggling to grow your online fitness business? Are you ready to learn what the most successful fit pros do differently? If so, my name is Vince Del Monte and I have coached literally 300 plus students to six and seven figures per year in profits. And I have seen people go from burned out and broke to living the life of their dreams. I've seen young people, I've seen older people with no business experience start and build a business that has given them time freedom and flexibility and financial security. And in this video, it is my honor to share with you from my experience, as well as my students' experiences, the mindset and the tactics that you need in order to build your own fitness marketing machine. So tip number one is that you need to be committed to having an online business. This can't be something you're interested in. This is something that you have to be committed to doing with or without mentorship, support, a program, a guide on the side, etc. This is something that is all in commitment. Burn the boats, there's no looking back, there's no testing this out, there's no seeing how it'll go. And a commitment is based on a decision, it's not based on a feeling, it's not, hey, I'll see what happens. All right, it's not putting your future in circumstances' hands. This is the number one thing that we see between our successful and unsuccessful students. The people who are successful are already committed to doing it with or without us. And they just know when they come into our world, they're buying knowledge, speed, relationships, accountability, results. They're investing to move quicker, but they're already planning on doing it. So my question to you is, are you committed or are you interested? Because interest is not gonna help you become successful. Tip number two to build a successful business is to set smaller expectations in the short term, set bigger expectations in the long term. And the reason we do this is because a lot of people start a business with different deficiencies. It's kind of like building your body. Even though I say, hey, I'm fully committed to getting my pro card, I'm gonna co uh, compete in 16 weeks from now, I'm gonna follow the diet, I'm gonna put in the workouts, that doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna get your pro card. What if I'm coming into that show prep with you know, 16 inch arms and I'm competing against guys with 18 inch arms? Well, I'm gonna need a couple seasons to bring my arms up. So by setting smaller expectations in the short term, I'm setting myself up to have longevity in the sport, if you will. And this is the same with entrepreneurship. If we say, hey, I'm gonna come into this program and in the first three months, I want to just get really good at DMing, or I just wanna build my program, or I need to make a new hire to free myself up. When you come into the program with smaller expectations, then you embrace something called pace. And you understand that slow is smooth and smooth is fast. So really crucial to say, hey, maybe I don't need to build a million dollar business in one year. What's wrong with building it in two years or three years? Why do you need a $10 million business by the age of 40? What's wrong with 45? Number three is to have a PM and a morning routine. You see, entrepreneurship, it's grueling, it's exhausting. There's a lot of responsibilities, there's a lot of pressures, a lot rests on your shoulders. So if you're not unwinding in the evening time, disconnecting from your phone, getting emotionally connected to loved ones in your life, guess what's gonna happen? You're gonna turn into a burnout and you're gonna start disconnecting and isolating from people that you need to stay grounded. The second thing of successful people is they have a morning routine. A morning routine where you stack wins. This is very crucial in the first 30 minutes of the day to start your day off with purpose. Whether you have a cold shower or have two liters of water or take a progress photo or spend 10 minutes of reading in your devotion or sending three gratitude texts. What your wins are, are up to you, but you should have at least three to four wins in the first 30 minutes of the day. And the last thing I'll add to this routine to make it super successful is to be in the no phone zone the entire time. So in the evening, the hour before bed, and in the first 30 minutes to hour of the day, there's no phone. So there's no distractions. We're focused on working on our life and not in our life. Does that make sense? Number four, post content daily. I can't tell you how many people I see who think they need advanced tactics. They're making even 30 to $50,000 a month and I go to their account and they don't even post every single day. 
They're not doing their stories. They're not going live. They have a post maybe five, six times a week. That's the same amount that uh, some of my relatives post and they don't even have online businesses. So how do you expect to cut through the noise? So a really simple one is you have to show up every single day. You have to have a content calendar. You have to create your content in advance if that helps so you don't miss days. You can pre-schedule content if you're not working on the weekends or if you're going on trips. You need better planning, all right? If you don't have good planning, you're gonna have piss poor performance, all right? And your engagement's gonna suffer and people are gonna go to other coaches who are showing up daily and serving because they're more trusted because you can rely on them. So if you're not even showing up daily to engage, then don't expect people to engage with you. You have to lead the way. Number five is you need to start 25 conversations a day in the DM on Instagram or on Facebook Messenger. A conversation is when you message somebody who's engaged with some of your content. And there's different ways to start these conversations. A really simple thing that we found is to just become curious and ask somebody, hey, thanks for checking out my page. What brought you into my world? And that's a really simple line to start a conversation and to start building rapport before you start asking any qualification questions. Just like you meet somebody at a bar or at the grocery store, you don't try and qualify them to see if there's something in it for you. You build some common ground. You get to know each other, right? And if you're not having at least 25 conversations with new people every day, then you're not gonna be able to book two or three calls per day because you should be booking 10 to 20% of the conversations you have into calls. So you have to be starting conversations with new prospects every day in the DM. This is a high income skill you cannot avoid. The next thing is to book at least 10 calls per week. Now this is pretty minimal. We need to build this up to 40 calls per week. If you wanna make $100,000 per month, 40 calls per week will get you there. And I can share with you the math. Let me just uh, break down what 10 calls per week would look like. So 10 calls per week or 40 calls per month, let's say you have an 80% show up rate. That's 32 calls on the calendar, all right? Let's say you close 40% of them. That's 12 clients. And if your average price point is $1,000 times $1,000, there's your $12,000 a month business times 12 months, there's your $153,000 a year business with very high profit margins, probably 80 to 90% profit margins, if not more, because you can do this all by yourself. You don't even need a team to book 10 calls per week. In fact, you could book 40 calls per week before you even think about delegating booking calls to anybody else. And that's what we teach our students. Number seven, this is so crucial. Run to your coach, not from your coach. It sounds obvious because you're paying them. Wouldn't you use the program and the support and the help that they use? But what we find is that a lot of people, they go what we call dark. They let their ego, their pride and shame get the best of them. Ego is saying, oh, I already know this but they don't actually have anything to show for it. So they stop showing up to get help. Pride is I should be further along. When they start hearing things like, hey, you need it post every day, they feel like they need an advanced tactic. You don't need an advanced tactic. You need to do the basics, right? And then finally, shame. Uh, shame is feelings of guilt that, oh man, I messed up again and not extending yourself grace and understanding that you're building a freaking business, my friend. This is not easy. 95% of businesses fail in the first five years. So you don't have to beat yourself up so bad. This is gonna take a lot more time, money, and effort than you anticipated. So we find that the people that don't self-sabotage and go in isolation, those are the people that are successful, the people that connect. They run to the coach and they're vulnerable. They say, I'm struggling. I need some help. Number eight, successful people use the competition to inspire them and not get discouraged. It's so easy with social media to always feel like I'm not enough or I'm never gonna catch up. And guess what? This isn't a freaking race, right? You need to look at people as teammates. If I see a competitor of mine and they're way ahead of me, that's inspirational. Now, I'm not gonna sit here and lie to you and say, man, but man, we should be closer to that. If he's doing that, why are we not doing that? 
You have to understand that that comparison racket will self-sabotage you faster than anything else you can imagine. Because then you become ungrateful, you become whiny, you start to blame, you stop taking ownership, you don't value your journey. And the successful people look at the people around them who are further ahead as people that can pull them along. They look at people in a coaching program who, who are so far ahead and they don't say, oh man, but look at Frank's doing, look what Charlie's doing, look what Sue's doing. They say, wow, this is what's possible? I'm so grateful that I'm here and I get to learn from them. That is the attitude of successful people. This is how you stay in this game longer than one or two years, which is what happens to most people because they don't, they don't get this stuff. Number nine is they celebrate wins and they give. The most successful people I know are go-givers. They're not the guys with their cards close to their chest, not sharing anything and having a scarcity, small-minded mindset. They're people who are abundant thinking. They are sharing their knowledge. They're connecting, they're collaborating, they're offering help, they're open books. This is how I've got to where I've got. There's more than enough for everyone in the world. So successful people gain satisfaction knowing that they're helping people and they're on this journey, bringing people up with them and that they're not just on this solo mission running through the finish line, pounding their chest like this. No, if you're struggling and you think, oh man, I don't have time to help other people. Guess what? That's probably why you're struggling because you're in isolation and you're not connecting with people and letting people know, hey, uh, let me see if I can help you. And then guess what? You get supported back and the next thing you know, you're making progress again. Lastly, they avoid the two most dangerous words in the English language. You know what those are? I know. The second that you say, I know, your brain switches off and doesn't look for solution or it's not receptive to feedback because you know. If you know something, then you don't need to listen. You block it out. And I know is a protective mechanism, right? It keeps you safe. So here's a good example. Let's say uh, you're joining a coaching program and they're doing a call on, you need to improve the quality of your program. And you're like, oh my gosh, are you serious? This is what I paid all this money for? I already know that. But you have 30% renewal rates, it means that you don't know it because you should be getting 70 to 80% renewal rates. So you don't actually know anything about building a better program until you have something to show for it. And again, this is the mindset of successful people. They say, hey, what am I missing here? My, my renewal rates are way below par and they're teaching basic information that I've learned in the last five coaching programs I was a part of, but I still have this problem. So maybe I don't know this, Maybe I need to become a student. I need to start to receive some feedback. And then, guess what? You might actually dig in and see, oh man, we're not doing that, we're not doing that. Oh shoot, we're really dropping the ball on that. Oh man, we gotta really up the quality in that area. And then you start to take action because you drop this I know mentality. Be willing to be the dumbest person in the room. Be willing to ask stupid questions. That's when you're gonna get the most support. Be willing to say, I need help. I hope this video helps you build a successful and profitable marketing machine. And I hope that these online fitness coaching tips served you well. I'd love to know in the comments below which one jumped out at you. Let me know the number below and which one did I miss? Add something below that would be valuable to our viewers here today. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, do that right now. If you need any help growing your fitness business, best place to get a hold of me is Instagram or Facebook at Vince Del Monte and send me a message Hey Vinny, I love to talk coaching. I love to get some help and let's have a chat. Thanks so much for watching today. We'll talk to you soon.